In today's notes, we'll be taking a quick look at the physical geography of Latin America. Latin America is made up of a variety of areas and has a variety of physical features. Again, Latin America is huge. It's South America, Central America, and Mexico, and the Caribbean. There are a couple significant mountains or mountain ranges throughout Latin America. The largest of these is the Andes. The Andes stretch along the western coast of South America, and they're the longest mountain range in the world, about 4,500 miles long. The Sierra Madres, two mountain chains that run parallel or next to one another, run through Mexico. And the Central Highlands are located in Central America and contain a number of volcanoes. We also have a variety of plateaus and highlands. Plateaus would be elevated flat areas. Highlands would be mountainous areas, not quite as high as mountain ranges, but higher in elevation. The Mexican Plateau is in between those two mountain ranges in Mexico, in between the Sierra Madre Occidental and the Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains. The Mexican Plateau is where Mexico City is located. The Altiplano is a high plain, and it sits in Peru and Bolivia, mainly in Bolivia. It's an elevated area that sits within the Andes Mountains. The Brazilian highlands are along the southern edge of the Amazon Basin. And the Mato Grosso Plateau is an elevated flat area along the southwestern edge of the Amazon Basin. It would be in between the coast of Brazil and the Andes Mountains, close to the Andes. We also have some lowland and plains areas. The Llanos are located in Colombia and Venezuela. They're just north of the Amazon. The Pampas is a plains region in northern Argentina. And then throughout Central and South America, we have coastal plains, or flat areas sandwiched between mountain ranges or highland areas and the coast. So all along the coast, in between the Andes and the Pacific Ocean, are coastal plains. And along the eastern coast of South America, in between places like the Brazilian highlands and the Atlantic coast, will be coastal plains. There are a number of significant rivers throughout Central and South America, throughout Latin America. The biggest of these, of course, is the Amazon. It's the second longest river in the world, and it carries more water than any other river in the world. There are three rivers, three main rivers, that run through the southern part of South America, the Parana, the Uruguay, and the Paraguay rivers, and they all empty into a place called the Rio de la Plata. It's the big open river delta that's in between Argentina and Uruguay. Along with the physical features in Latin America, we also have diverse climate and vegetation throughout Latin America. One of the dominant characteristics of the climates of Latin America are the vertical climates that exist in the Andes. These are climates that are determined by elevation. The Andes, again, a very long mountain chain, the longest in the world, and a very tall mountain chain, so we have a variety of ways that the climates are affected by elevation. Starting at the bottom, the Tierra Caliente will be the warmer climates, all the way up to the Tierra Alada, the much colder climates. Starting at the top, the Tierra Alada, which means the fr frozen land, is an area that's covered in permanent snow and ice. This would be snow caps and glaciers. The Puna, which we have no translation to English for, is an area above the timberline, so only grasses grow here. It's used for grazing livestock uh, in South America. That would be mainly sheep and llamas and alpacas. Below the Puna is the Tierra Fria, which means the cold land. This is an area that will freeze in the winter. does have forested areas. Uh, it's an area known as the cloud forest. High enough in elevation that clouds cover this area pretty much constantly. Below it is the Tierra Templada, which literally means the temperate land, but a better description or a better translation would be the warm land. This will have a variety of forests, both broadleaf 
forests and evergreen forests. And the lowest level, the Tierra Caliente or the hot land, this would be the rainforest areas uh, along the Andes. And there are many other climates throughout Latin America. A huge portion of Latin America lies within the tropics, so we have both tropical rainforests and tropical savannas. The tropical rainforests, which your book refers to as tropical wet climates, these are areas that get at least 80 inches of rain a year and will be warm throughout the year. Certainly the Amazon rainforest would be part of this. It's the largest rainforest in the world. And many parts of the Amazon are much, much wetter, getting as much as 230 inches of rain a year. Because it's so hot and so wet year-round, there's a huge variety of plants and animals, more so than any other place on Earth. There are other tropical rainforests in Latin America. Much of Central America is covered in rainforest. So are some of the islands of the Caribbean. Tropical savannas are warm areas in the tropics that don't receive as much rain. They generally have a wet season and a dry season. These are found mainly around the, the rainforest areas, around the Amazon in South America, and in the southern part of Mexico, just outside the tropical rainforests that exist in Central America. The steppe climates, the biggest of these is in Argentina, in northern Argentina, an area known as the Pampas. And when we looked at pictures of this area in class, it's the area that looks very similar to our own, to the panhandle of Nebraska. Lots of grasses and small shrubs, very few trees. And there are some deserts in South America also, or in Latin America rather. The most prominent of these is the Atacama Desert that's in Peru. Uh, it sits up in the Andes Mountains. And some areas of the Atacama are considered some of the driest areas on Earth. Some of these places haven't received any rain in over 40 years.